Good morning, everyone. My name is Araya Harley, and I am the Communications and the Events Manager for the Chamber of Commerce. And today we'll be working with um, Angelina Evans, and she is a CPA for Shannon and Associates. She's going to go over 2021 QuickBooks for desktops. In between this process, if you guys have any questions, concerns, please feel free to raise your hand or make a comment in the chat. This is going to be an open forum um, for us. And as always, we are recording this presentation, so I will send you the recording as well as contact and PowerPoint slide that the end of this presentation. Again, if you guys have any questions or concerns, please feel free to uh, comment or raise your hand um, during the presentation. And I will go ahead and give the floor to Angelina. And thank you so much for um, presenting for us today. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. So today we're going to be going over some QuickBooks um, tips and tricks and just some basic uh, pr processes and procedures. So um, my name is Angelina. I've been with Shannon since September of 2017. So this year will be four years. And um, I've been in accounting for about 20 or so years now with raising kids in the middle of all of that. So I love small business and um, QuickBooks is a great tool for that. So our agenda for today, let's see. So we're going to go over classes. And then after we discuss classes a bit, we're going to see how those can apply toward transactions with customers, transactions with vendors. We're going to go through bank reconciliations. We'll go over the balance sheet and profit and loss and kind of go over how to read that. And um, we'll just briefly cover budgets. So, Okay, classes are a great way to differentiate between business services. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and then open up QuickBooks here. Okay, does everybody see the QuickBooks window here? Yep. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. So the first thing that I always do when I get into a QuickBooks file is I go to view and open windows list because you can end up with a bunch of open windows and not know like what you even have open. So when you have this open windows list here, it's great because you can see what windows you have open and easily navigate there. So what are classes? If you have a business and you have a couple of different kind of service lines in your business, instead of creating accounts and the chart of accounts for each different service line or anything like that, it can really kind of muddy up your statements. So a great thing to do is to create classes. So if you come over here to list and you go to um, class list here. So in this sample business here, Larry's Landscaping and Garden Supply, there's just four classes here. So there's a design portion of his business, landscaping, maintenance, and then of course overhead or like admin. So these are useful because when you are looking at your customers and you're going to create an invoice, you can invoice your customer and assign it to a class. So let's say we're going to invoice Adam's Candy Shop and we're going to do some landscaping for him and we want to do just some basic installation. And then our class is landscaping, $35. So it's great on this invoice. We have the class, we're ready to go. And then when we come over here to our reports, so you would go to reports and then company and financial and profit and loss. You can come down here to profit and loss by class. And it kind of breaks the different services out by class so that you can pull um, a profit and loss just for design or just for landscaping or just for maintenance. So it's a really helpful tool. <clears throat> so back to customers. When we're going to invoice a customer, we pull from an item list on that invoice. So go to customers and then item list. And this is where you're going to set up everything that you have to offer for your customers. This is where you're going to kind of start the invoicing process. So in Larry's landscaping, he has service, he has inventory items, 
He has non-inventory items, um, a few different types here in the item list. So for our service, this is gonna be basic delivery installation. For inventory items like deck lumber, when he goes to invoice for deck lumber, it's going to pull it up as taxable. So you would also want to have sales tax set up in your company in order to pull the correct type of item number or item item type here. You know, taxable sales versus a service is going to pull up as non-taxable. So the item list is kind of where your invoicing process starts. So once you have all of this set up, you can go to your customers and you can go ahead and create invoices. But before we do that, um, something kind of cool. So if you go over here to vendors, if you're going to enter a bill from a vendor and in this landscaping company, let's say Adam's Candy Shop wants to buy some guava trees because guavas go, grow really well in Washington. So we'll go over here to Gusman's Nursery and we're not gonna deal with purchase orders right now. So we'll just say no. And we're going to want to come over to this items tab. So when you're entering a, entering a bill for a vent, from a vendor, you have a couple of different options. So there's an expenses tab and an items tab. So for the guava trees, we're gonna to want to go over to items because it's going to um, be something that we hang on to until we resell it. So we'll come over here and go to fruit trees and we're gonna buy two of those for our customer. We're gonna have it go to Adam's Candy Shop. We're gonna make sure that the class is landscaping so that pulls up correctly on our profit and loss in all of our reports. We're gonna mark it as billable so that when we go to invoice Adam's Candy Shop, it pulls up. So we're gonna close that. And then you can go back over to the customers, create an invoice and find Adam. And yes, we are going to go ahead and apply that billable item over here are fruit trees and it pulls it up as landscaping. We're gonna assign it up here as landscaping for our class. It's taxable. So the tax go ahead, it's applied to this invoice. And that would be how we do it. And so when Adam wants to go ahead and pay us, for the fruit trees, which on the invoice, we would also wanna charge him for labor. But let's say he wants to go ahead and pay us for that. So we're still in our customer section. We're gonna to go to customers and we're gonna to go to receive payments. Because let's say Adam's Candy Shop pays us for the trees and we just go to banking and make deposits. And we just enter the payment here. That's going to kind of mess up our accounts receivable because we're going to record income here when we receive the deposit and we've already got income reported on the invoice. So when you have invoiced your customers, you need to be very careful about receiving payments instead of just making a deposit because that will duplicate it. So we'll go to customers and receive payments and find Adam. And then we can go ahead and find this invoice if that's what he's paying for. So just to quickly mention QuickBooks Online, when you have the baking download, it's very important to match your transactions properly with receipts and invoices so that you don't end up with duplicates. It's very easy to do in QuickBooks Online. So that's how we're going to account for the customers. For our vendors, we kind of saw how to enter a bill 
but we saw how to do that, assuming that we had an item, sorry about the door, versus the expense. So let's say instead of an item that we're purchasing from a vendor, let's say we need to pay for our electric bill. Or let's say we need to pay for some payroll taxes or something. Okay, let's go to, I believe up here is an oil. Okay, so let's go over here to Bayshore Cal Oil. So that's gonna be a utility. So this is gonna be the correct place to enter just a monthly expense, an overhead expense like utilities or office supplies or anything like that. We'll just go here and not on the items tab. And so let's say the gas bill is $150 and it's not really to a customer, it's just overhead. So we're gonna call it overhead. And then that will over allocate properly on the profit and loss. Okay, so when we have bills set up under vendors, again, like receiving the deposits, we want to be sure that we're not just going to banking and write checks to pay for those. We wanna to come to vendors and pay bills. So when we come to vendors and pay bills, we'll see that utility bill here and we can pay that. Okay, and, and so then all of that will show up properly as it'll show up under the class section of the profit and loss. So there's a couple of different options for the profit and loss. You can either just do a general profit and loss standard where you can see everything that happened in your year regardless of class. So you'll be able to see your income and everything regardless of class, which is helpful if you need to kind of quickly see what your bottom line is regardless of class. Or if you did want to break it out by class, you could go to the class report again, profit and loss by class, and it will show you everything here. Okay, so let's go over bankrupts quickly. So once you've recorded all of your transactions and you have your statement from the bank and you're ready to reconcile, you'll come to banking and reconciliation. You'll come over here and select your account. So there's only just a few options for the bank account here. So we'll select checking. It shows you the end of the statement period that you wanna reconcile. You'll have your beginning and your ending balance. And then you'll just continue. So one good thing to do here is to come up to this box, hide transactions after the statement's end date. And it will take away everything that has happened after that closing date of 11.30 and this sample file is set to 2025. So everything after 1130 is going to be hidden. And that can be very helpful because um, when you select a transaction from the following period, it can really throw off your bank reconciliation. And we've actually seen that happen a couple of times. So then cash doesn't balance the balance sheet and you kind of have to go digging to see what happened. So you need to mark off everything that cleared. And something good to kind of watch out for when you're doing your bank reconciliations are old transactions. So we're doing 11-30-2025 in this bank rec. So this transaction from last year probably needs to be voided or any of these old ones. So anything older than maybe six months or so, you can consider going ahead and voiding or writing off just to make sure that you keep your cash account really clean. And one thing with that, if you do need to avoid or write off an old transaction, just make sure that when you adjust it, you need to adjust it in the correct period. So yesterday was the tax deadline, May 17th. 
So let's assume that your CPA has already prepared your tax return for 2020 and you're doing your bank rec for May, April, and you see an old transaction that you need to avoid, make sure you do it in 2021. Because if you do it in 2020, it's going to mess up your opening balances for your accountant when they go to prepare your tax return for this year. So one really good thing to do to prevent that from happening is to go to edit, and then you can go to preferences, go to accounting, and then company preferences, and you can actually close your books. So that's a really great thing to do. You can have your closing date be 1231. In this sample file, we'll do 2024. And then I always do one, two, three, one, like two, four, just to make it easy to remember. So just do it as of the closing date. Okay. And then we'll just not do the admin password on the sample file. So if you do that, and let's say you want to void this, it's a transfer. See, now I can't delete this transfer or void this transfer because my books are closed. So that'll prevent me from making adjustments or modifications to my ending balance in a closed year, a year that's been closed. So that kind of helps your accountant quite a bit. All right. Okay, so once you're done with your bank rec, let's say you want to look at your financial reports. So the first thing I look at, <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm reviewing a file is a balance sheet. So let's say you want to take care of your file, review your file before you give it to your accountant. So one good thing I really like to do is to look at the previous year and compare it. It kind of helps you see any changes that you've had in your year, anything that could look unusual before you hand off your file to your accountant. So a good thing to do is just kind of start at the top and look at your checking balances, your bank balances. Make sure that you're reconciled because if you're reconciled, that means that you have captured everything that hit cash so that your file, you know your file is complete. So just start at the top and verify your balances against your bank recs. And if you wanted to take a look at your accounts receivable, you can go into reports and go into customers and look at your AR summary as of the end of the year. And one good thing to do when you're looking at your accounts receivable is see if there's anything really old in here. So like this transaction here, it's greater than 90 days old. If that's not collectible, you should probably have a talk with your accountant and um, have them help you write this off or set credits against this invoice so that you can remove it if it's not collectible. So just drill down on the balance sheet on anything that you need to look at. Prepaid insurance, is that used? And um, inventory, make sure that looks reasonable because a lot of times what can happen as you're buying inventory, you can set up the items in inventory and inventory grows and grows. But then when you invoice your customers, possibly you don't pull inventory items out. It just goes straight to cost of goods sold or um, the inventory doesn't get adjusted properly. So it's good to periodically review your inventory and make sure that's accurate. And then you'll come down here to accounts payable and same thing. You'll want to go to reports, vendors, and pull up your AP. Make sure there's not anything old in here that needs to be dealt with. And then you'll look at your credit cards and those can be reconciled just like cash. So you'll want to make sure that those are also reconciled monthly 
to make sure that your file is complete so you can use it to look at your financial statements. You'll wanna make sure to check your payroll liabilities. So when it comes time to pay your payroll liabilities, it's good to not just come in here and write a check to pay for those. You need to go to employees and then you need to pay your payroll liabilities out of the employee center. So you would come in here and select your liabilities and go ahead and generate this check. And then this will take the payment out of the liability account instead of just putting it to expense. Because when you pay your employees out of your QuickBooks file, all of that expense gets recorded when you pay your employees. So you wanna make sure that when you pay the liability, you're paying it as a payroll liability. Same thing with sales tax. You wanna make sure that you are paying your sales tax from here. So sales tax and then pay sales tax instead of just writing a check to make sure that you don't overstate your expense. And from there, you would go to your loans. When you write checks for your loans, make sure that you record the interest portion of the loan instead of just writing it against all principal. So when you do that, you'll come to banking and write checks. You'll find your loan and let's say the payment is Fifteen twenty-five. So you've got fifteen hundred against the loan, and then do a new line for interest, and that will apply against the loan, the principal portion, and the interest expense. Okay, and then your accountant will um, review the equity section. So, but this would be a great help to them. If you have your accounts reconciled and your liabilities paid and recorded properly. Okay, so let's say you wanna review your profit and loss by class. So you would just look at the income and then any cost of goods sold, any labor to make sure all of this looks reasonable. And you've already checked your inventory on the balance sheet to make sure that that's accurate. So cost of goods sold should be accurate. This column is for things that are unclassified, this unclassified column. So when checks were written or bills were set up or invoices were created, if it's unclassified, it just means that this invoice was created without a class. So if you're going to use classes in your business and you don't assign them, to every transaction, it is not as helpful as it could be because then you have this unclassified column with transactions that could go in these four classes, but they're just not allocated. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and just continue to look through each of these and make sure they look reasonable, make sure nothing looks just completely out of whack and overstated or understated. So one thing that can happen when payroll liabilities and sales tax liabilities are not paid properly. So let's say instead of going through the pay sales tax or through the pay liabilities, let's say you just write a check and let's say it's to the Internal Revenue Service for $7,000 for payroll liabilities. And instead of doing the expense, let's say you do liability. And you ignore the warning about paying payroll liabilities. Okay. So then what can happen is when you come over to your balance sheet and you're reviewing that, you'll see, huh, I have got a negative in this account instead of what I would expect to owe. That's because the 
payroll liability has been paid, not through here, and then as a check. So it can just kind of mess things up. Or let's say we're reviewing our profit and loss by class, and we go over to the payroll section. And we notice, wow, 37, 8, 20, 65, that's a lot more than I expected. That could be because the payment was paid all to expense instead of the liability. So the point of all that is just make sure that you're paying those liabilities correctly. Okay, so with this too, let's say you wanna compare the profit and loss to the prior year. You can either do that by class here, which is gonna create a lot of columns and make it kind of hard to review. Let's say you just wanna look at design for the year. So you would come over to customize and for filters, instead of doing all the classes, you would just select the class and then you would filter it to just design. So now we can look at just design and that makes it a lot easier to review. Or instead of looking at it by class, you instead just want to look at it as your entire year overall. Okay, so then you could just compare this year to the prior year and see, hmm, looks like I made quite a bit more money in 2025 than 2024. So maybe this was the first year you were in business and that's why there's such a huge change in income. But the comparative prof profit and loss and the comparative balance sheet makes reviewing really nice to see what changes you have to see anything that could look like it's really out of whack and maybe isn't correct. Because it's really nice to have financial statements that you can actually use to see where you are with your business. So we can go over budgets next. So you would want to come up here to company and planning and budgeting. So you're gonna to wanna to set up your budget So you can do a budget by class. You can do a budget just by account. So what you would want to do is what you, once you have your budget in mind, you would wanna come through each of these different income and expense categories and you're gonna enter your budget information into each one of these all the way down and then as you go through your months, it'll give you an annual total. So one thing that's really good is let's say each month you expect to pay $200 for workers comp. And you can just copy that across down here instead of having to enter it every month. And then that will give you your annual total so that can be super helpful. And then when you're ready to review your budget, you can go to reports and then you can go down here to budgets and forecast and look at budget versus actual. Let's do by account in class. And you can look at it by month or account by class or class by month. We'll just look at account by month. All right, and so then you can kind of see for October, our net income budget was 305 or our net income was 305, but our budget was 15. So we're well over our budget and then just carry that month by month, all the way through to the end of the year. And then you can see what it looks like for your whole year here. So it's 
pretty close to what they expected. So budgets can be a really helpful tool to kind of see if you're staying on track with what you anticipate for the year or not. So we can go into more detail with customers or vendors or reports, or if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those as well. It's just kind of up to you. Nobody has any preference, or we can also do QuickBooks online too. Okay, so do you guys, we can look at a purchase order for vendors and see how we can apply that to an invoice. But this all assumes that you would have a business that would purchase products instead of just provide a service. So if you want to do a purchase order, you can go to purchase orders go back to the nursery, Gusman's nursery for landscaping and get those same fruit trees. We're gonna send it off to Adam's candy shop. Okay, so now we have this purchase order to send to the nursery. So let's say we do go ahead and buy those fruit trees. Then when we do our invoice this time, when, our, when we do our bill, we're going to pull up the nursery and we're going to go ahead and say yes for the purchase order. We want to receive against that. Okay, I think it was 12. No, okay, so let's go to this one. Oops. Okay, so let's delete this. Yeah. Okay, so vendors, enter bills. Let's try this one. Okay, so my purchase order is not applying to the bill. Okay. All right, so we can go back and find it. Okay. So let's go to select PO, find number 12. There we go. Okay. And so it's the same thing that we did before. So we're just going to mark it as billable to the candy shop. Okay. So then when we go to customers and do invoices, we wanna go ahead and select the billable item. Our item is the trees. Okay, and so this time let's say we wanna go ahead and apply some labor for installation. Okay, and then let's say um, Adam's Candy Shop is like, hey, do you guys have any discounts for better ends or anything like that? And we'll be like, sure, we can give you 10% off. So let's go over here and we're going to pull up our discount. And it takes it off of the labor, but what we wanna do is take it off of the trees and the labor. So we can go ahead and adjust that to $18. And then it charges the tax 
on the fruit trees, less the 10%. Okay, so the discount as well comes from this customer's item list. So you can set up your items, you can set up discounts. We can do services, inventory, non-inventory, other miscellaneous charges, discounts, payment terms, sales tax. But all of this comes from the item list and that can be found in customers item list or it can be found in vendors. And then you would go to items list. So if you need to, let's say you need to do a new sales tax item. Let's say you're gonna have customers that are in an area that charges sales tax and you don't yet have that set up. So you would come to vendors, sales tax, and then a new item, okay? So let's call this Seattle, okay. So we're going to go ahead and set up Seattle for 10.1. Like that. And then you can just add them in the vendor list. You can either set them up if you do quick add, it's just gonna add it as a vendor. If you do set up, you can add the information here, phone number, address, payment settings, tax, everything that you would wanna set up here. So another handy thing you can do with your vendors, when you have a new vendor and you know that they're going to need a 1099 at the end of the year. When you set them up, okay, so you can do a new vendor. And then when you are ready to do your tax settings, you can click here, this box, vendor eligible for 1099. And then when you come to the end of the year, it will go ahead and create your 1099s for you. You can do all of that through QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online too. So if you go to reports and vendors, you can look at a 1099 summary. I'm not sure if this file has any. Set up for, and they don't, they have no vendors set up for 1099s. But that can be really helpful when you're ready to prepare your 1099s. Okay. So does anyone have any questions about anything so far? All right. So let's see. We can go back to reports and look at the banking and we can look at previous reconciliations and there aren't any. So let's go ahead and just reconcile this cash account real quick. Okay. All right, so Okay, so we're all reconciled, same opening and closing balance. Okay, so one really good thing that you can do here. Okay, so if you go to reports, banking, previous reconciliation. <clears throat> okay, so if you are in here and you wanna see your reconciliation and you wanna see it just the way it was when it was reconciled. You would click this button here, transactions cleared at the time of reconciliation. 
But let's say something has changed since then. If you click this button, it will show you the transactions that cleared and then any changes made since the reconciliation. And this report is handy because if anything changes between when you reconciled and the time that you're viewing the report, it'll show the correct cash balance instead of maybe an old cash balance. Because let's say you are reviewing your file before you give it to your accountant. You want this register balance to tie out to your balance sheet. So these two should be the same, the checking and the reconciliation. So that can be kind of helpful. All right, and let's say you want to prepare a report. Let's say it's profit and loss by class. And you want to do just the landscaping portion of your business. And you want to compare it to last year. So we're going to filter it by class, landscaping. Okay, and maybe you don't want to have to generate all of those changes each and every time you look at this report. So what you would want to do is memorize your report. You can call it profit and loss by class. You can even create a memorized report group. Maybe you want to call it company. And so then when you do that, when you memorize it, now every time when you want to generate this report, you don't have to go through all those changes. You can just go to reports and go to memorized reports. And then you can go to company and find your profit and loss by class. And it will memorize all of that for you so you don't have to change it which can save some time, especially if you're perhaps preparing reports for sales tax or anything like that in order to prepare the B&O return. All right. So um, let's say you need to make a journal entry. So to do a journal entry, let's say you need to record a transfer between accounts and you don't wanna use the transfer feature here. So you could go to company, it's also an accountant, but you could go to company and do a make journal, general journal entry. Make sure that you check your date so that you don't do anything in the prior period. So let's say on 12, 15, you want to transfer from checking to petty cash because your petty cash is getting low. So checking has a debit balance normally. So to take out of that account, you're going to want to credit it. We don't really need to worry about classes because all we're doing here is balance sheet transactions. So you're going to take it out of checking and put it in petty cash. All right, and that's all you have to do with that. Or let's say you've given your file to your accountant and you get journal, general journal entries back to make. Maybe let's say for depreciation. You would want to go into that same spot to record those entries that your accountant wants you to make. So one really cool feature about desktop, instead of sending a backup copy to your accountant and then having to make those journal entries, what you can do is you can go to file and you can go to send company file. You can send them an accountant's copy. 
So what the accountant's copy does, it kind of prepares a dividing date in your file. So let's say you want your accountant to be able to look at your transactions and make journal entries up through the end of the year. So you would go to file and then send company file accountants copy. And you would want to send to accountant. Oh, that's, well, it's a sample company file, so you can't, but let's say it's not. So what it would ask you to do is set a dividing date so a really good dividing date is January 1st of the next year, because let's say you have journal entries that need to be reversed. Let's say something in accounts receivable isn't quite right, but it needs to be reversed the next year. So if you do it as of 1-1 the next year, you can go ahead and have your accountant be able to make those reversing entries too. So at that dividing date, your accountant can work in your file up until 1231.25 and then, well, 1-1-2026 if you do that dividing date. And then you can continue to work in your file. You don't have to wait. Like let's say you send a backup and you're waiting for that back. You don't have to wait. You can keep working in your file. And then when your accountant is done with the file, they send it back to you and it incorporates those changes. You don't have to make the journal entries. So that can save a lot of time and when those changes import, your records will match what your accountant has and what's on your tax return. So it can also help eliminate errors, which is really helpful tool. So with QuickBooks Online, that's a live file. So when your accountant goes into QuickBooks Online, they can make changes in there that are live so that when you log back in, you don't have to make any adjustments or send files or anything like that. All of the changes are already incorporated, which can also be helpful. And there's also a feature in online where you can go back and look at the audit trail to see what changes were made and who made them. That way, if you have any questions about maybe why something is different, you can pull up the history for each transaction. So I really like the accountant's copy because I like for my clients to be able to continue to work in their files so they can continue to be productive. And then I know that when my changes come in next year, when I go to do their tax return, my opening balances will match the tax return, especially if they have locked their file and can't change anything. So that can be really helpful. And I think that's about it, unless you guys have questions. Um, in the employee center, that's where you would go to pay your employees. You can do a scheduled or an unscheduled payroll. So scheduled would be the normal biweekly payroll. Unscheduled could be a bonus payroll. But it is helpful that in scheduled payroll, normal payroll checks are memorized. So you don't have to keep recreating pay periods each time. So that can also save time. So we've gone through reports, we've gone over budgeting, we've gone over customer and vendor transactions, we've gone over bank recs, we've gone over how to lock your file to prevent unintentional changes and um, sending the accountant's copy to your accountant. So if there's any questions, I'm ready. Or if there's not, then everyone gets a jump start on their day. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Angelina. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Stuff. Thank you guys. And um, as I mentioned before, um, you know, this presentation will be recorded and be uploaded on our YouTube channel. So um, I will send the link out to you guys by the end of the day. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do that. Again, um, uh, Angelina's contact information will be in the slides with the, um, with the presentation. So if you do have any additional questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to her or you can contact someone at Shannon Associates as well. Um, Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you for presenting for us and you guys have the rest of the rest, a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thanks everyone. Thanks,